Welcome to another episode of Jamming with Jason. Hey, uh, today I have a good friend, Mo Issa, on with me. And um, it, it's one of those where we've, we've known each other for a while, but it's been a while since we've last connected and uh, just felt like I needed to have him on the podcast. As we get into it, you're going to see why, because uh, he's had an amazing career. He's an amazing man. And so whatever you do, hang on and listen to this whole episode, because there's going to be a lot of different things that are going to help you to improve your life and your career. So with that, let's roll that episode. Hey, Mo, how you doing, man? <laughs> hey, Jason. Long hey. time, huh? It's, well, yeah. it's, been, it's been a long time. And it's, it's one of those two where it's like, I mean, we both know people all over the world, right? I mean, I think right. we, we first met I think in San Diego, when we were yes. both getting trained by Brian Tracy to be coaches, right? So right. that was how we kind of first met. And and yeah, I don't, I live in LA, so I'm not too far away, but you're in Ghana, right? You had to come <laughs> like halfway around the world uh, to, to, to show up there. Um, but what's nice, you know, one thing that I love about this is when we go different places, we know people, right? So it wasn't but a year later, I was in Ghana doing a training. And so it's like, hey, Mo, let's hang out. And we did. And it right. was awesome, right? Yeah, that's, um, yeah. Of course, I think the next time I was there, you happened to be in London that week. So it was like, uh, but anyway, but especially now with, with um, you know, what we have electronically, you know, with technology, it's great because, yeah, we can just hop on and, and talk, even though we're literally um, half a world away. So you know, I wanted to bring you on because I, I know I, I, you know, get your, your newsletters um, okay. because, and, um, and there's, there's certain themes that you kind of talk about that I just love too. Right. And so wanted to kind of, kind of bring on, I know you've got a traditional brick and mortar business, but you also are a speaker and help, help people as well. So maybe if you want to just take a minute and just kind of introduce you to everybody, I know who you are, but everybody else doesn't know yet. So Yep. Uh, I mean, uh, as you said, uh, let me start with because um, I, I I traveled all the way to San Diego. He said from Ghana, and that's that's sort of that's a trademark of, of who I am because I'm I'm originally from Lebanon in the Middle East, and my parents immigrated to Ghana, West Africa, and I was born here in Ghana, and I traveled and studied in UK and and came back to Ghana. So I'm all over the place. Uh, yeah, I started my business brick and mortar 25 years ago, and it's uh, it's, it's it's doing uh, quite well. Uh, but almost like was it 10 years ago when I started this sort of uh, I call it the self discovery journey, where I, I started digging deeper because uh, I'd made money and I've lost money. I made money again, and and m money didn't seem to answer all my questions. Uh, even though that's how it's brought up, uh, if you know anything about Lebanese and, and their history, it's it's like we leave our country, we go out, and a lot of them sort of aspire to make money, full stop. Mm -hmm. So uh, ten years ago, I went into self discovery journey. I, I started going traveling. Uh, one of them was the San Diego with Brian Tracy, where we met, and I wanted sort of to to really understand both myself more and to help other people. So I, I started uh, going into speaking, uh, coaching, and writing, which we'll talk a lot more uh, afterwards, is mm -hmm. uh, sort of was the centerpiece for everything that, that I became this new Mo who was completely different and, and uh, revolutionary as compared to, to the old Mo. Uh, and it all came because of, of, of me expressing myself on paper, basically. And uh, yeah, so, so, so now uh, fast forward 2021, I think it's, I don't know if it's eight years after San Diego and, and when we met and 10 years after we started, uh, after I started my, my journey, uh, I'm, I'm still at the same place, sort of balancing both worlds. The, 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 the typical businessman with the, <laughs> with the hard nosed <laughs> businessman. <laughs> who has a who has a team under him and uh, living the, the the other more authentic life, and sometimes I feel like a hypocrite. Like why don't I just cut cut my my business 
connections and sort of live the life that I want. But it's also uh, difficult to do that because responsibilities, uh, bills, and all kind of that. So, so this is where I'm at at the moment. But yeah, definitely, I I, I sort of delve deep into the inner world, uh, a cross section between philosophy, psychology, and and emotional well being. Let's say. Yeah. Well, that's what you know to kind of touch on what what you talked about at the beginning because this is this is true. I mean, we see this all the time. I mean, we're both midlife you know, and, and we've experienced a lot of life already. And, and what you ex, ex, explained there at the beginning, you know, you've made lots of money, you've lost lots of money, you've made lots of money, right? So again, right. there's so many people out there that think, well, when I finally make X amount of money, then I'm going to be happy, right? Or right. when I accomplish Y, then I'm finally going to be happy, right? But that isn't the case, right? I mean, that's that's what you found in in your own journey. I mean, that's why ten years ago you kind of, you know, woke up and had that. I mean, we call it midlife crisis, probably for a reason. Yeah. We've, yeah. we've lived long enough, and we realize, hey, the paradigm or the model of the world that I've been living is not making me happy. Absolutely, and and I think midlife crisis that the. The, the actual phrase has a bad uh, connotation. It's like heavily uh, loaded, but mm -hmm. in reality, it's it's not about a, a balding man and a red Ferrari chasing younger <laughs> woman, right? That's, that's that's what everybody image. thinks about. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But but it's not true because it's it's a time where where we sort of feel this quiet. It, it's not something that you're depressed all the time or or you really feel like you need to uh, go go on meds, but but it's, it's just quite the satisfaction that sort of keeps uh, like uh, bugging you from uh, in the background, right? And it's like, I'm okay, I'm, I should be grateful and, and yet I'm not so happy. And that makes it a, a, like a double dose of, 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 uh, of uh, guilt, right? Like, why am I not happy? I'm feeling guilty, I, I, I'm okay, I'm much better than maybe, I don't know, 90% of the population. And yet it's it's a time where you are reflecting. It's a midlife, it is midlife because you've sort of spent several decades doing, running, achieving without even reflecting or thinking. So something, maybe an event comes along or maybe it's just quite the satisfaction that hits you and you start reflecting and thinking, you know, what if sort of, slowing down maybe i'll start enjoying maybe i can start seeing the actual flowers that i walk around with every day which i i never did 20 years ago mm -hmm. and that's a true story for me anyway in my, in my garden yeah well which is why so, you know stop and smell the roses there's a reason absolutely. why all these little cliches and sayings come up right yeah 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 and i know cliches sound so like boring and like everybody knows what they are but they are they are usually true right <laughs> they are oh true, yeah if we can say I have yeah. to, I have to stop and remind myself to literally smell my roses out in the back. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, I've got these two little rose bushes that I just love and and kind of care for, and yeah, I've got to stop and go outside and smell them and be grateful and just be present in that moment. It makes me feel a lot better because yeah, if not, we just get caught in all the craziness of life, and and we just kind of forget. And like you said, sometimes that leads to that guilt. Well, guilt is one of the worst emotions that we can feel. We don't want to be Absolutely. feeling guilty, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. I mean, I'm, I mean, and and midlife crisis is a point of reflection where where it's like our old ways don't serve our new being, and it's a time to to realign our values. Like maybe my, and there's nothing wrong about uh, success and making money, which was a big driver for me when I was young, but let's say midlife or whatever it is something hits you and i'm realigning my values like what really matters what are, i've only got 30 or 40 years to live right so what mm -hmm. what are the big pride that's when you start thinking or what are the big things that i want to i want to i want to i want to do in this in this world in this life well and, and it's interesting because like you said you know that midlife you know we're both at the point in our life where we've got fewer years left to live than we've already lived and so yeah. again, it's like, shit, what am I going to do with the last 30 years of my life? Right. And, and, you know, again, I know a lot of people that are listening, you might not be as old as we are, but why are, why are we talking about this? Cause we don't want you to wait, right? Absolutely. Don't wait as long as we waited either 
to start learning some of these things, shake up, you know, like you said, our old ways no longer serve us. And, and this mm -hmm. happens all the time is we get caught in these routines, we get caught in these patterns, and it's not actually helping us get what we want, right? And so we yes. actually have to change if that's what we're going to do. And I know that's that's what you're helping people do. That's why you've been writing books. That's why you've been speaking is to try to help people kind of come out of that. So how do people come out of it? I mean, uh, at the end of the day, it goes, all goes back to self-awareness. I mean, whether it's reading a book or, or listening to a podcast or uh, going to a Tony Robbins event, all these things are not going to change, transform your life. You're going to have to do it, right? Mm -hmm. But they're at least a point of reflection, a point where you start asking yourself questions. Am I happy? Am I satisfied? Is that what really I want to, what I want to do? And, and it's not always easy, especially for younger people, because uh, I've, I've, I've spoken to a lot of younger people and, and they say that, you know what, you've, you've, you've sort of spent your life doing and acting and now it's our time. So, so when we get to your age, maybe we'll start asking the question. <laughs> but, but as you're saying, I think once we start sort of, and, and today is, is, is a great, I mean, podcasts are everywhere, blogs are everywhere, uh, courses are online. It, today is, is a great place for information, which is only going to be a springboard for you to start thinking and reflecting. And the more you do that, the more you're intentional. And that's, that's the point that maybe the younger people should look at. I'm not saying stop chasing money or stop chasing your dreams, but be much more intentional. What do you want from life? Well, not you, what the social media want you to know, you know, like that. And that's another issue. Maybe we'll speak about that. Not just social media. What about the media environment? Because I feel like even with, with me, when I realign my values, a lot of my values were not even mine. They were either by my parents or my environment or, yeah. or the media, popular culture. So, Yeah, because you, you see that a lot. And I wanted to bring up because you used a couple of words, you know, about thinking and reflection. Right. And I know, you know, because I, I've, I've spent a lot of my career teaching, training people, right? Because, because I have a passion for learning. Every single day, I'm learning something new, folks, right? I'm listening to podcasts. I'm reading books. I'm, I'll go down the rabbit hole on Google, you know, about different things. I mean, one of my favorite things to do, which is kind of weird, is my wife, she, she brings in all these uh, uh, into our playlist, all these uh, movies based on real life. So we watch okay. a movie based on real life. And then I like spend a half an hour trying to figure out what actually really happened. Right. Who were these people? What is this? Whoa, I didn't know that. Ah, right. So I'm constantly learning every day. But what a lot of people don't realize in those words that you used is learning is not the same as acquiring knowledge. Right. Because, again, mm -hmm. we can read all the books where learning comes is in that reflection and in the actual exercising and practicing, right? So Absolutely. you can read all the books you want. You can listen to all the podcasts you want. You can go to all the Tony Robbins yep. type events, but unless you actually do something about it, unless you stop and reflect and incorporate that into your life and until you start doing something different, it's all for naught right? You've wasted your time reading if you're not going to do anything about it. And I'm sure you've probably Absolutely. seen that in your life and with other people you've worked with too, right? Absolutely. I mean, I mean, I can even, I remember when I, I went to the, I went to a Tony Robbins uh, event, he made us walk on fire, which is amazing. And we really did. There's no scams or anything you did. He, he puts you in such a state of mind that you do. You leave, I left on the Sunday, uh, the whole week I was, wow, man, I was on, I don't know what we were on, but it was something good, <laughs> something good. And I could sort of uh, build the universe the way I felt. And then it sort of slowly drops away because you have all these dreams, all these aspirations, but we've, we've not sort of put them in concrete. We haven't taken any action towards them. It's a good place. And as you said, action is key. Uh, there's a anonymous quote that says action is the language of gods basically so mm. you can you can read as much as you want you can learn if you don't actually emotionalize it put it 
into your nervous system, actually act on it, nothing is going to happen. And uh, for me, nothing sort of the only changes that I could say that really helped me was was when I started incorporating uh, habits, creating systems and habits and writing being key, one of them that that really I started seeing change in my life. Well, in that you use the H word, right? Habits, which I love. I love that word. And, you know, again, it's a word that usually gets bad connotations because when we, when we say the word habit, we think bad habits, right? Like you got to mm. break all these bad habits, but you forget that a lot of the action is those good habits. So what are those yep. good habits that you need to do, um, you know, in order to, you know, be able to, to get what you want. And I love that. I hadn't heard that, that quote before action is the language of God's. Because, well, you know, what's interesting is a lot of people think, well, if I just hope and wish and pray for it, then, you know, everything will just happen, right? And I think it was, I think I heard the story from Jack Canfield, but it was, you know, about this guy who wanted to win the lottery. And mm -hmm. so every week he would pray, he'd go into the church and he'd pray, you know, God, please help me win the lottery, right? And so yeah. he'd go in every week and he'd do that prayer. And finally, he's in there one week and, and, God, you know, he's sitting there praying, 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 and God comes on. He's like, my son, all right, I heard you, but go buy a lottery ticket then, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that, excuse me, that if we don't actually take some action, it's just hoping and wishing and praying. And that, so you Absolutely. do have to, you do have to take action. Now I know you've, you know, you've written, I think multiple books already. I think you're working on one, one now, right? But that's, that's one of those where a lot of people say they want to write a book, but what does it actually right. take to write a book? You actually got to sit your butt in the chair and do it, right? That's it, exactly. And and writing, I'm sure you, you we all write and you've written before, and and it's such a it's not something that's easy. It's such a difficult task to do, and it's but it's not uh, hard per se, but it's difficult because you just need to sit your butt down and do the actual writing for one hour every day or half an hour every day. And if you do it consistently, you can have a book at the end of six months. It's as simple as that. But it's that initial sort of initial taking of the action that, that is the hardest, I, I, I always find. And uh, going back to the habits, uh, and for me, what, what really, there was a cornerstone habit and that changed a lot of things for me was I started rising early, like one hour earlier than, than anybody else in the, in the house uh, around five ish. And I would, uh, first thing I'll do is uh, I sometimes meditate on and off. Uh, sometimes I believe I become a Buddhist monk and the other <laughs> days I just don't believe, I don't believe in it anymore. Uh, it's, it's that's difficult, but I, I go back, I, I, what has stuck with me, the biggest habit is journaling. Mm. So every day in the morning, I, I get up, I journal for, I follow Julia Cameron's The Artist Way uh, procedure, which is write out three pages, whatever comes out. And usually it's about uh, what I'm grateful for for the past few days, uh, what my desires are, how badly the day went, for example, uh, what were my flaws, why did I explode? In the middle of the, in the middle of, a, of of the road, on somebody cutting me up, uh, on my dreams, on my goals, and sort of I found that habit which which I've maintained for I, I've rarely missed days. I've maintained for more than seven years now. It's sort of this expression of my inner self really has helped me uh, establish what we're talking about: that the thinking and the reflecting and the actual learning yeah. stage to get into action. Well, and it's, it's, you know, what you said, hopefully everybody that was listening heard that Mo's been doing that for seven years, folks. That's a habit, right? And it, at, at the beginning, it wasn't easy, I'm guessing, right? Because like you said, the Absolutely. initial is usually the it's hardest point, easy. right? Until you do it 10 times, 30 times in a row, your brain's trying to sabotage you and getting you to stop to do it, right? So you got to push through that initial time until you develop it as a habit. Now I'm guessing it's not hard for you to get up in the morning and do that, right? No, absolutely. It's a, it's a joy, actually. I mean, I get up early and I look, that's the first thing I look forward to. Yeah. yeah well, 
and and it's like you said, I mean, you know, having these, we, we never accomplish as much as we'd like to in one day, but over the course of 90 days or a year, we accomplish a lot more than we ever thought was possible if we're consistent. Right. And, and yeah. like you said, you know, if you get up every day, if you write for an hour every day in six months, you actually have a book. You know, Absolutely. so again, for people that yeah. want to write a book, that's what you do, right? You got to get up, you got to actually do it. You got to be consistent with it long enough, but all of a sudden you have it and you've accomplished your yeah. goal. Now, I know we, we were talking before we hit record, you know, that there's, there's some other stuff that you do around that with writing with book to kind of bring some music into this as well. Right. That, that you kind of have like a, a whole little practice that you go through as you do that so maybe just kind of share with people because again this will be another way that people can incorporate music and other stuff into their life to help them get what they want yep um i mean for, for me to get into writing to the uh, that flow uh the famous word now it's become like a second <laughs> one of the most famous words right flow to get into flow or in the zone or whatever i i, I the kind of music i listen to is sort of neoclassical music it's uh uh i don't even know their name sometimes i just go to spotify and i have a playlist uh, which i use uh every time uh it's the same playlist it's sort of uh music without words sometimes it's a piano sometimes it's a violin and it's uh, it sort of engages my mind like white noise in the background, but at the same time doesn't take a lot of uh, my thinking mind uh, energy, and and, and it, it helps me sort of relax and get into the flow, and then I just start writing immediately. Like I put on the headphones, uh, whether it's uh, yeah the AirPods now, and it's like magic it works obviously with a with a cup of strong coffee <laughs> you get this 5 a.m yeah <laughs> yeah yeah like like strong coffee is gonna do the trick yeah well and it's uh you know because that's that's one of the things too that is people you know just to share with you you know some of those things that you're doing in psychology we call anchors right so right so what ends up happening is again you get up every morning, you have a certain routine and you're anchoring activities with some of these different things you do, putting on your headphones, selecting right. that playlist, you're listening to the same playlist every day, right? Those things are anchors that kind of help you get into that state that's going to make it easier for you to actually do your writing as well, right? So right. I, I do the same thing. There's there's really about like three, three different playlists that I listen to most of the time. I'll get up, you know, first thing in the morning, there's, there's some music I listen to to help me kind of wake up. I have one that I use to get me excited and started for the business day. And I usually have one at night that I listen to that helps me kind of calm down and relax so that I can sleep well. Right. Okay. And so it's, it's, you know, you're doing the same thing that you can actually use music as a way to get you to both help you do the habits, but also get you into an emotional state, right? Because again, I'm sure that, you know, the neoclassical music that you listen to works for you. It gets you in that certain state that you need to be able to write. Now, if you were listening to heavy metal, it's going to get you into a different state, right? Okay, again, yes. I love heavy metal, <laughs> but it, that's not what I listen to first thing in the morning or right when I'm going to bed, right? Because I need to be in a certain state. So I'm helping music to kind of get me into that particular state, right? Yes, yes. Uh, I mean, when I work out, uh, I, I work out uh, four days a week or five days a week and, and that's different kind of music. Yeah? It's it's more electronic, electronic uh, house kind of music that really, Pumps you, and gets pumps you, you up and gets yeah, you going. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and it's great. And it, it's, um, you know, as, as, as we talk about, you know, some of the stuff that, um, you know, you've been working with and how you've been trying to help people too. I wanted to kind of see, is there is there kind of a common theme that you see too with, you know, when, when people, you know, like you said, you know, you kind of get to that point and it's like, you're not really satisfied with, with mm -hmm. everything that's going on. Are there some tricks of some things that people can do to kind of help get them out of that and get them kind of moving 
forward as well? Does everything kind of have the same root cause at the end of the day, or is there? I mean, it's it's all rather subjective because everybody has his own sort of deep issues which he has to work out. Uh, I mean, I really believe that we all come with certain, or we develop certain issues which we are supposed to work out, right? Uh, mm -hmm. My issues are different to yours. Your upbringing was different to mine. But having said that, I, I really feel like what is common to all of us is that life is just too fast. We really need to simplify things much more now. The, inf the amount of information the amount of things that are happening around us, I don't think we are, our brain was meant to handle all that. So as much as we can, we can slow it down, simplify our lives. Uh, I mean, if you can go become more mindful is the word, but it's so difficult practicing the, the mindful meditation ways, but, but, but just simply simplifying things, whether it's your phone being silent at night or taking a day off, uh, your phone is off for the whole one day a week or something or whether it's just n not reading any of your newsletters, anybody's newsletters for a week as well. Uh, Except for Mo's, read his every week. <laughs> ex uh, yeah, so I was just going to say that, yeah. And so mine. I believe that, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's quite uniform. I just think we need to slow down. The, well, because slow it, down it's, and yeah, and it's interesting that you say that because there's another there's another story that I'd heard that kind of illustrates this is, um, you know, in the beginning, the gods got together and they said, hey, you know, we've got this really valuable thing that man needs, but we don't want to, we want to make it hard for them to find. And so one mm -hmm. of the gods says, well, let's, let's put it at the top of a mountain, because they'll never find it there. No, you know, they can climb up the mountain, they'll probably find a way to climb up the mountain. Okay, well, what if we bury it at the bottom of the ocean? They'll never get it there. Well, no, they'll probably find a way, right, to get to the bottom of the ocean and find this. And finally, one of them goes, why don't we put it inside the man? And the rest of them are like, ah, they'll never find it there. <laughs> right? that's, that's... So, so that's kind of what you're saying too, right? Is this, this slowing down because what's amazing is, as you slow down, you have these, you know, reflection points. Mm -hmm. That's when we can go into ourselves, And usually, you know, it's like the wizard of Oz, you know, at the end, she, you know, she clicks her heels together and the wizard said, you've always had the power to do that. It was always with you. And mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's kind of the same way, you know, you, we, we see it in Star Wars, in the force, right? right? Trust the force. Well, the force right. is, is in us, right? And so as we take that time to slow down, to reflect, to go internally, we can access that. And that's, that's where a lot of that calm comes. And like you said, you've got your stuff to work out. I've got my stuff to work out. They're different things. How are we going to know? We got to get quiet. <laughs> And figure yeah. out what it is for us that we yes. need to do. And that only comes from slowing down and having that reflection, the mindfulness, the, you know, turning it off for a little while yeah. and letting, letting it come through. And, and turning it off means also because of the deluge of, of all this media around us and people, we've become like similar to each other. Like I, I like the same thing you like, he likes it. There's no individuality anymore. You feel like everybody likes or dislikes, or there's a big polar, uh, polar opposites, right? So we, we're not taking enough time to really, what are our values? Do I really like baseball? Just because 10 of my friends like it, do I really like it? Or do I really like this new writer who came out? Or is it because uh, the New Yorkers activism <laughs> stroke are really pushing pushing the writer to be famous because of some political reason. Uh, I mean, that's these, that's why when you slow down, you get to know what, what, who are you? Who, who do you want to be? And who, who really authentically, who the truth, authentic authenticity of yourself? Well, and that's, that's sometimes a very hard, hard thing to go through. Right. And so again, that word like authenticity comes up a lot because you know we all we we all are different we don't have to have to like the same things and it's okay <laughs> right 
just because everybody else loves the last movie or the last book that came out, if you don't like it, you don't like it. It's okay. Right. Yes. Yeah. I, I think personally, that's what makes the world so much more enjoyable for me is the diversity of people, likes, dislikes, opinions, other things like that, that actually make it, you know, if we, if we were all the same, it'd be a boring place. Right. That's Ima- true, yeah, exactly. Imagine if ever, if everything in the world was the same color, how uh, boring I mean, would that be? Right. It's, it's, it's true, but unfortunately, and especially now, I feel like the younger generation, it's like everybody's so afraid to give their opinion. Otherwise they're going to be, uh, trolled on Twitter or canceled. I mean, it's, it, it's just ridiculous. Um, and it's so harder for them to be themselves. Uh, I, I, I remember Oscar Wilde's uh, quote, like, uh, be yourself, everybody else is taken, right? Yeah, I love that, that's one of my favorite quotes. It's, it's on, my, on my refrigerator Our in the image. kitchen, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, and, but the, I mean, are you really being yourself? That, I mean, that's where, that's, where we, we, that's where we need to really ask the questions. And sure, we're going to be, uh, a lot of the times going to be hypocritical. We want to be something, but we can't. Uh, we are, we're pressured, uh, but, but it's a process. It's a, authenticity is a journey. It's a process. It's not a, it's not, oh, I pressed a button. I've become authentic all of a sudden. <laughs> if it were that easy, like right? The pharmaceutical yeah. companies would have come up with a drug already for that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, no, and it's, it's, you know, maybe that's where we can kind of spend just a couple minutes here before we, before we wrap up, because I I think it's, it's, um, you know, that, that self-acceptance side of it, Mm -hmm. you know, I think is, is sometimes what is so hard for people and, and psychologically it's, you know, with cognitive dissonance, if, if you, you know, believe two things simultaneously, you end up going crazy effectively. Right. And so you know, the problem is, like you said, a lot of times it's, you know, and again, when we were younger, we wanted to be cool. We wanted to fit in. We wanted to wear the right clothes, say the right things. I mean, there's, there is that tribal need for inclusion, Mm -hmm. right? In fact, one of the biggest human fears is to be excluded, right? So that's why we're trying to fit in so much, but trying to fit in when you don't really fit in causes a lot of psychological problems for people as mm-hmm. well right yeah and and being honest about what it is that you really like what it is that you really need what it is that you really want is like i said sometimes you know we wait until midlife most people wait until midlife to start asking themselves those questions we should be asking those questions earlier as well absolutely right? i agree yeah because that's that's more the key to you know, you've been 10 years into this journey. Do you feel like you know yourself better now and you're much more comfortable now than you were at the start of the journey? Oh, yes. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm nowhere near close like, like uh, I would want to be, but I, I look at, I just compare myself from where I was before. And uh, definitely, and, and uh, you touched on self-acceptance and, and I think the root the root of everything is, is about self-love and the self-compassion that we, I don't know what happens to us, but when we are babies, we all love each ourselves and each other, but suddenly something goes wrong <laughs> and uh, this inner, inner talking comes in and we start sort of uh, not loving or not accepting ourselves. Uh, and, and even through the last 10 years, I've, I've went through a lot of ups and downs, like my, over the past maybe three or four years, my business really went down. So I've had to focus a lot on it and rebuild it. And, and even after all my uh, work, inner work and, 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 and stuff, and I, I went through phases of my life uh, of these months that, that, that I was thinking, of, why, why did I mess up? What happened? I was supposed to know A, B, C, and D. What happened for me? to? Why did I uh, lose my, my business touch or whatever? So... so I, I really sort of went through self-loathing and, and, and for a while. And, and then all of a sudden I started working through them. It was obvious I was going to go through the, this path because of my obstacles when I was brought up. There are certain issues which have not been resolved and, 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 and now are being resolved. And I should really be, and I am much, so much grateful now for the bad times I suffered because I'm a, 
I'm a different man now. I'm much more vulnerable. I can immediately you, you, you talk, I can tell you about all what, what my faults are. Maybe five years ago, you criticize me. I'll be arguing with you within in seconds. So, so you, you see what what the journey does. The self acceptance. I've accepted myself. I'm not perfect. All of us, and we're all human humans after all. And we're gonna mess up. We're gonna continue to mess up every month, every year. But the trick is not to do the same mistake every time, right? That's that's. Yeah, we're that's trying to the, learn, so we're not making the same mistakes. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's 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 the key, that's key, I think. Well, and that we don't need to be hard on ourselves when we make those mistakes either, right? Because again, that it's that's that's where um, you know, for me, because especially the last couple of years, I've been working on this more too. Because you know, at first, when when somebody's like, "Well, it really all comes down to kind of self love and self acceptance," you know, five years ago, I would have said, "Bullshit, no, that's not true." Or, mm. "Look, I I I don't have a problem with that. I feel like I'm fine." But then again, in those periods of reflection, when I would make a mistake, and I would hear that internal dialogue, and I would hear how I was talking to myself, all of a sudden, it became quickly clear. <laughs> that maybe I didn't love myself as much as I thought I did because would I talk to someone else that I love the same way that I was talking to myself? And the answer was no, right? Because a lot of times I was being very critical um, of myself. And instead of realizing that, look, mistakes are a part of life, they're in the past, we learn from them, we grow, we're probably gonna make some mistakes in the future, but that's okay. Right, because who I am right now is who I need to be right now to learn the lessons that I need to learn right now, so I can be that different person tomorrow. Uh, that's so true. Absolutely right. Yeah. Uh, Rumi, Rumi famously said, "Your task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek and find all the barriers within yourself that you have built against it." That's. Mm -hmm. I mean, he wrote that. I don't know how many thousand years. That, that's still the key to key to everything. It's like, we, 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 as I said, we were babies, we were grown, we loved each other, we loved everyone. There was so much love. Then suddenly all these obstacles grew between us and love. That's, that's, that's the key. What reminds me, because one of, one of my coaches, right, one of the people that's coached me, um, reminded me again, right? Because a lot of times we always think it's about what we're going to get, right? Mm -hmm. So what am I going to get? The next thing, the next growth, the next whatever, right? And, and the point was, when are you going to realize it's not about what you get? It's mm -hmm. about what you give up. Oh, it's about what you nice. let. It's about what you let go of, right? So, so you bringing in that about those boundaries, right? And so again, yeah. metaf metaphorically, right? There was Pink Floyd's album, The Wall. I mean, right. that was all about this man creating brick by brick, this wall that separated him from everybody else, right? And mm -hmm. so we all are doing some of that each day. Are you adding a brick to your wall or are you taking it away? Because, I mean, that Rumi quote is amazing because that's the yeah. point, right? Is what barriers are we putting in, in, our, in our way to say that I'm not good enough or I can't do that, I can't have that, I'm not worthy of whatever. <clears throat> and so it's not about what we're getting, but what do we let go of uh, so that we can receive sick. more? Yeah, I like that quote by a coach. Yeah, what, not what we get, but what we give up, right? Yeah. And sometimes that's hard, you know, for, for me, because again, it's like, what do you mean I have to give up something? Well, we have to give up something to get something new, right? The whole right. idea, if the glass is already full, can't put any more water in. If it's already full, you got to get rid of some <laughs> of the water before you can put more in. That's right. what we have to do metaphorically in our, in ourselves as well. Right. Yep. Yep. Totally. Good stuff. Good stuff. I always love talking to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, I know we got to, we got to end up wrapping up because we can't, you know, people got to get back to other things too. But I, I do always like to ask a question when I can is, you know, again, we've, we've talked as men in our midlife. Um, but if you, if you could go back now, right, if you could tell that, you know, 20 something Mo, 
what advice would you give them to help them in, in, you know, in his career and in his life, you know, that, that you wished you would have known back then? I mean, yeah, I've thought about that a lot and, and I would say just uh, slow down, smell the coffee, smell the roses, relax. Nothing is going to go away. Nothing is so urgent. We grew up so young, like I, I remember myself, I want to do this, I want to go here, I want to do this. And, and then you end up doing and doing and doing and not enjoying anything. Just sort of chill, relax. And I, and I say that, and I don't mean chill and relax, meaning that you have uh, no, no goals, uh, or no, no, but slow down, nothing is gonna, nothing is gonna go away. No, and when we, because it's, it's the same way. I mean, again, we're, we're both at the point where our kids are adults and it's, you know, how many times have I heard a parent say, oh, I, I just can't wait until they grow up. And then so many parents, once they grow up, it's like, oh, I wish the kids were little again, right? Mm. It's, yeah, it's, almost, yeah. it's almost like, you know. That's me. That's me talking. <laughs> is that you talking? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. But it's, it's, it's um, you know, yeah, to just slow down and realize that everything's okay. It's, you know, you're not going to miss out. You're, you're on exactly, exactly the path that you need to be on. And, and what's again, interesting is, you know, how many, there's, there's tons of stories about this where people are working and working and working and working so hard. Right. And then finally they, they burn out, they do whatever, they have to step back. And then all of a sudden, boom, right. Some inspiration comes to them something ends up working its way out but they never would have gotten that if they mm -hmm. had continued in that rat race yep. and yeah. so it's you know slowing down and relaxing i got to keep reminding myself to do that too <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah well, well, this has been great thanks thanks for coming on um like i said i always love talking to you i appreciate you um how can people reach you? How's the best way for people to get a hold of you and be able to get on your newsletter and see when your new book is coming out? Yeah. Uh, anyway, thanks. Uh, thanks for the speaking. And, and I really enjoy our conversations as well. Uh, my blog is uh, mo-isa.com. Mo-isa.com. And uh, Instagram and Facebook, it's at mo-isa. Okay, so uh, same. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the newsletter, newsletter on the blog, you'll just get it, yeah. Okay. My new book hopefully will be available next year, so I'm hoping uh, middle of next year, so let's see what happens. Yeah. Well, no, it's been good, and like I said, yeah, reach, reach out to him. He's been... Um... And don't wait to get as old as we are before you start thinking about some of these things, right? Because <laughs> then life has passed you by. And and again, I mean, it's, you know, I've been on the path I'm supposed to be on because it's made me who I am. But there's, there's a reason why some of the older people try to help give advice to younger people too. Because we, we don't want you to make some of the same mistakes we did um, if you don't have to, right, as well. So, well, Mo, thank you probably have to have you back again but uh thanks and uh we'll see you later thanks jason take care have a good weekend thanks